Hey guys, welcome back to Keys to the Cosmos. Well, a little bit of a different setting here. I wanted to do sort of a fun video. As you can tell by the title, this is my telescope story, zero to a hundred quick. Anyone who knows me, when I get into a hobby, I dive deep into it and astrography was no different. The nice thing is that one hobby usually moves on to the other and that hobby funds this, the next one, and that was the case here. Um, my sneaker hobby, I was able to sell a lot of those, some of them at profit, and that's what's paid for most of these telescopes. But I just want to sort of give you a brief uh, synopsis of my story. It's only been not even two years. I'll be coming up on two years later this month here in June 2022. But, uh, you know, my very first video, if you haven't watched it, I kind of explained how I got into this, so I won't go over all that, but just very briefly how I started and how I got to where I am now. So it all started in 2020, uh, May, I would say, or April. Um, obviously, COVID, a lot of people started hobbies and a lot of time on our hands being at home. And I've always loved astronomy. Um, you know, I've never had a telescope before then. But I've always loved it and I always wanted to get one. I've been talking about it for some time and I thought, well, that was the perfect time. So I don't even have a picture of it on my phone, to be honest. My very first telescope, it did not last long, but it was the Celestron. I think it was the 114 LCM or something. I'll, I'll put it here and here's a picture of it. It was a four and a half inch Newtonian, obviously made more for visual. At the time, I didn't really have uh, much knowledge of astrophotography. I just wanted to be able to to view the planets and stuff. And so uh, I would view right from my condo balcony. We had a nice south view. And I remember setting my alarm for two, three in the morning and I'd sleep on the couch, wake up, go out to the balcony and, and wait for Jupiter and Saturn to come right in front of my balcony and I would view them. And yeah, I was blown away, you know, as, as most people are the first time you see like Jupiter, Saturn. But I'll be honest with you, I knew right away at least in the first week, that this wasn't going to be enough. I wanted more focal length. So, fast forward, not much time. I don't know, maybe two, three weeks. Found a good deal on a Celestron C8. So we're not talking the the newest, newer ones, the orange ones. Um, but this is the model before. Here's a picture of it here. This is the older C8, the black models. And these were great telescopes. I would guess they go back to probably the 90s maybe even before that. Um, but I happened to find a guy in Kijiji who sort of buys old telescopes, fix them up, collimates them, cleans them, and then flips them. And so I bought it off him. I got a really good deal on it, actually. He threw in a couple eyepieces as well, and it came with um, that alt as mount that you see in the picture. So uh, a step up, and, uh, you know, I think my wife at that point knew what she was getting into now with this because I didn't really tell her about the C8. I just sort of brought it home and explained that I got a great deal on it and that I was able to sell the the first one there, the 114. And so that was a nice step up going from like, I don't know, I'm gonna guess that 114 had somewhere around six, 700 millimeters of focal length, maybe a bit more, going to 2038 or whatever it is, the C8. So uh, going from four and a half inches to an eight inch was great. I bought a couple of nice eyepieces for it providing me some great views of Saturn and, and Jupiter and Mars and all that. And, and uh, I actually did my first planetary with that C8 telescope. So I loved it. And I kept that one as I sort of went into astrophotography. So that's when I started to see images on Instagram and people around me, like in Mississauga nearby, taking these amazing pictures. And I was, as I mentioned in my very first video, I was blown away by it. And I just kind of said to myself, I have to do that. So... That's where I started researching into astrophotography. I knew I wanted to start small because I didn't have the proper mount for it. Um, I was going to be starting with a, a star tracker, my uh, star adventure, and a tripod. So I needed something small. So that's where with a little bit of research, to be honest, I didn't really know what I was doing. I just kind of went with the popular choice and ones I had seen in other uh, videos and things. It was the Red Cat 51. I liked the way it looked. I read good things about it. It was small. It's light. I knew it was a good quality one, so that's where I started. And I don't regret it, you know, it wasn't too expensive. It was a great place to start. I still love this scope. It's not going anywhere in my collection. Uh, and, you know, I still think it's a great telescope for people just getting the hobby to start with. Because it's the kind of scope that you can, it's not like you're gonna outgrow it. Yeah, you're gonna want more focal length most likely, but you can still go back to this. I still use it when I image like um, Andromeda and some of the bigger stuff out there if you want to do multiple targets depending on the camera you're using. 
So that's not going anywhere, and I'm, you know, I do not regret buying that one at all. Next up was my Sharp Star 76 millimeter. Now, at this point, I was kind of really into astrophotography. I actually sold a C8. In fact, I even made money on it, which is very rare. But I was just funny story. I was just trying to sell the the mount here that you see in the picture that alt has mount and i had a bunch of people asking well what about the scope as well so i ended up selling them together to a guy in calgary and i actually made money on it so that was great which funded the uh sharp star 76 millimeter so that was a little bit more focal length still small still technically could fit in the star tracker although looking back probably wasn't the best idea i should have invested in a, in a small amount at that point it did hold me back i was only able to do 60 second uh, exposures and even then it was tough to get around stars sometimes but nonetheless this is an amazing scope now unfortunately i will be selling this by the time i put this video it may already be gone uh it's not because it's not a great scope it's an amazing scope i've taken some of my very favorite images like comes to mind my latest rosette that uh, is definitely my top three of my best images i would say top three or four this is an amazing scope. For the money, I bought it with the reducer. You really can't beat this scope. I love it. It's a little bit cheaper than some of the big names out there, but the quality is there. It has a great uh, lens in it. It's just an amazing telescope. It's just, as I'll talk about, it's a little bit redundant. I don't need all these scopes anymore. Um, so I'll be selling that. Um, and if not, I, maybe it's already sold by now. But I love it. And that's also a great scope to start with. If you are willing to buy a small mount along with it, an equatorial mount, this is a great scope instead of the Red Cat. Start a little bit more focal length going from 250 to 340, 339 with the reducer in. Um, so love it, but that one is, or it will be going anyway. Next, I got my Explore Scientific ED-102. Not pictured here because I sold that. I gave it, sold it to a friend um and he'll be making good use of it this summer amazing scope i did a whole review video if you haven't watched it watch it um loved it though that was a jump up again to like 500 millimeters of focal length with the reducer but much like you know you're getting into a different tier i would say uh, the build of it was amazing with the carbon fiber just really good glass uh, a slight tear up from the sharp star even though I, as i said it's a great telescope um loved it but of course I got the Takahashi, which we'll get to, and that became redundant. So I ended up selling that ED-1 too. But along the way, I also bought the, the bigger brother, ED-127. Um, these were hard to find. I was able to get my hands on one. And what was nice, as I mentioned in other videos, I was able to share the reducer between the two. So, you know, it gets expensive, the telescopes alone, but then you got to buy reducers for them. And so for some of these telescopes, they can be expensive. So that was a big plus being able to share the reducer between the two and not having to buy a second one so that's sort of where that came in i just did a review on this hopefully you're able to check out the video this is my ed127 uh, again you're stepping up from 500 millimeters of focal length with the reducer to 667 so you know 167 millimeters definitely makes a difference and uh this telescope's not going anywhere i've been using it like crazy i love it it's the perfect size for what i'm using it for as I talk about in the review video, this telescope's not going anywhere. But along the way, I also got, I don't know if you count this as a telescope, we'll put an asterisk, but this is the Ascar. I've done a video on this as well, the FMA 180. Um, this is basically almost like a wide field, like a camera lens. You know, I don't use it very often to be honest, but it was cheap. You can use it as a guide scope if you want, a spotting scope. It comes with a flattener. It's nice and light, and you can put this on a star tracker, no problem. You could even try to do some Milky Way. It might be a little bit tight, but, you know, it's a great little scope, especially for shooting, um, you know, multiple targets. I've done that a couple times. I hope to use it more this summer. That was super cheap. I don't know if we count that. Um, but anyway, it's designed as a telescope as well, so technically you could call it one. So that was sort of purchased in, in, in between these ones. But this is where... The selling of the ED-102 came in when I bought this Takahashi. Now, um, we went from 500 millimeters of focal length with the reducer in the Explore Scientific ED-102. This telescope, as I talk about in my uh, overview video that I put out, it doesn't require a reducer. It has a flattener that comes with it. So it has a flat field and that's at 450 millimeters. So 
obviously very redundant. Um, and I use the money from that uh, ED-102 to pay for partially for this FSQ-85. Uh, so got rid of the ED-102 and now this has replaced it. This is definitely not going anywhere. This is a dream scope. I just started using it. This is definitely the best quality scope in the collection, highest end, and this will not be going anywhere. And even if I do decide to use it, I uh, sell it, I will not lose a dime on it, assuming I keep it in good condition. But these are always uh, highly sought after, particularly these models like this that astrophotographers are looking for. So love this one, not going anywhere. And last but not least, my uh, Celestron Edge HD. I've talked about this scope before. I did an overview video of it. Unfortunately, I haven't used it um, really at all. <laughs> Sad to say. Um, I was hoping to do some planetary last summer. It never worked out between terrible weather and just staying busy with my um, deep space astrophotography. So the goal is this year to get out with this thing, get it set up and do some not only um, you know, do some planetary this summer, but also next winter to do some proper galaxies. I never really got to do very many galaxies this season, unfortunately. I only got two images. Oh, pathetic is that? Um, both using the Explore Scientific, which I loved, but like for M82, um, which I'm not sure by this time that video will be out, but if not, it will be coming. Um, it just wasn't I mean, it was fine, but I would have rather used this Edge HD. It has a lot more focal length. We're talking like, uh, even with the reducer, like three times the amount of this. So um, I'm really looking forward to getting that and putting that into use. And it's going to be a little tricky, you know, not as forgiving as a refractor, but a lot of, you know, this is just a great telescope for both visual and astrophotography, as I talked about in my other videos. So looking forward to, to using that much more. So. These four, the Red Cat, the Takahashi, the ED-127, and the Edge HD, this is my four that I'm going to be going forward with. Um, the Ascar, I'm, not, I'm going to keep. It was cheap, and uh, I'll use it here and there. But these four are, my, are going to be my main scopes, and this should serve me very well. Um, you know, I'd love to keep the Sharp Star, but it's just, you know, it's a little bit redundant, and I need to buy uh, a proper electronic focuser for the Takahashi because these scopes will definitely be used the most this summer and then again hoping to use the Edge HD for some planetary so looking forward to it but I just want to share that with you I'm sure this will give some people a chuckle um, maybe not <laughs> your average uh, telescope collector but what can I say I love the process I love learning about them I love getting hands-on time with them and then once you're done with it you move on with it you can usually get good money for them if you buy good ones and it can fund the next purchase. So that's sort of how I've been doing it. And, you know, as I mentioned, selling other things from other hobbies to help pay for this. And, you know, one hobby funds the other. Now, I look forward to a lot more uh, videos, sharing these, what I can do with these scopes, learning, and hopefully passing that on to you and learning, of course, from other people as well along the way. But lots to come, but I wanted to do a fun video and share that with you. As I said, my telescope story, zero to 100, real quick. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.